the Nazis came up with the idea of a savings booklet. If citizens paid 5 Reichsmarks every week until they reached the full price of 990, then they could get their Volkswagen in a little under 4 years, when the full amount was paid off. 5 Reichsmarks a week was a reasonable rate for most working class Germans, and so over 300,000 Germans signed up. But none of them ever got their Volkswagen, and all of their hard earned savings would be lost. This tutorial is going to cover the creation of the draft edit all the way to applying effects and overlays. It was a long video, therefore I split it down into 4 parts, and if you want early access to the other parts before they are available on the main channel, you can find them on my Patreon with a link in the description below, along with the project file and assets used. There are some plugins we have to download and the first plugin we're gonna download it is animation composer 3 yeah they have a free version and a paid version but now you can download that free version and use it because we're gonna use it in this project and also there's another plugin which is the fx console from video copilot and you'll download this one if you're using windows or download this if you're using a mac okay so let's go so first of all we're gonna start by creating a new composition the volks wagon and we're gonna keep the dimensions as 1920 by 1080 and then the frame rate is gonna be 24 frames per second so now let's uh, make this 30 minutes and i want the background color if it's not by default black you make it black okay so i'm gonna hit okay before you even go any further let's come here and create some folders let's say this is gonna be for the assets and then we're gonna create another folder which is gonna be for the pre-comps let me drag this and drop it it in here now inside the assets folder we're gonna have to import some assets so these are the assets which we're going to use for this entire project folder let's drag them and drop them there so now our work is more organized okay now what we're gonna do i'm gonna come here and look for i'm gonna drag this nazi logo and place it in my composition it's not centered so first of all i'm going to first reduce the size by pressing s and then I'm going to resize it so now what i'm gonna do i'm gonna come here and then click on this and then i open up the title slash action uh, what i'm gonna do next i'm going to drag this slightly and put it in the center so now it's done so what you're gonna do i'm gonna come here and alt click because as default it is always the rectangle so it's gonna be alt clicking until you see the ellipse so now when it gets to the ellipse i'm going to release the logo because when we try to create the shape when the flag is selected it will create a mask but you don't want a mask so i'm going to deselect it and then what we're gonna do i'm gonna come here and create a shape but now this shape is not constrained from where we are creating the shape we're going to first hold control and then afterwards we're gonna hold shift so when you hold shift it remains a circle and we're going to go back here on our selection tool and then we're gonna bring this one in the center but now when i look at this it is bleeding out we need to know the difference so i'm gonna first change the shape to a color which is different from the background let's extend it slightly above somewhere like that with arrow keys now what i'm gonna do next so i'm gonna come here on toggle switches slash modes and then i'm gonna come to mat i'm gonna create a mat and the mat is going to be the shape which is above here so when i create this it will cut out the red part so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna go to the shape layer and then pick whip it to the logo so that when i move the logo it moves together with the shape press s which is for the scale and then resize it down and now i'm gonna come here to layer and look for a solid and for the solid i want it to be a red solid so i'm gonna just drag it to the corner and bring my solid down here but now it's so clean so what you're gonna do you're gonna have to introduce a texture then I'm gonna bring it down here let's uh, reduce the size it is so big and now I'm gonna change the blend mode to let's say multiply I think multiply would work for me but this is too dark you know like let me just uh, levels the reason why I'm using levels is because it is gonna help me to increase the contrast in the texture so now this it's already done let me just pre-compose it and just call it the uh, so Nazi flag and here okay i'm going to bring exactly the asset we used first or the texture and then bring it down here hide this one and then just scale it to 49 let me bring this i need a new solid it's gonna be like black because i want it to be down so i'm gonna drag it here and i can name it as background because this is gonna be our overall background so background and hit okay um when i bring my curves or let me use levels because levels is better let me just use this 
So now when we bring this one back here, I'm going to reduce it a bit too. Let me create a mask here. So I'm going to come here on mask and then come to the mask path and then double click on it to create this. Using our first technique we used, you're going to hold shift to move it evenly, something like that. So now it's done, you're going to press F or you can just come here and just move this because it's already available. Okay, let me, let me make this um, a 3D object and then animate the Z position, right? I'm going to press P for the position and then I'm going to go back at the beginning and then I'm going to move it backwards like that. I'm going to try to make it skip. Let's say we have a keyframe here. Let's say time 212. Let's put it like somewhere here. And then now what I'm going to do, I'm going to come here. And I create a keyframe. This is gonna be like a disposable keyframe. So I'm gonna copy this and then paste it on this one. I want it to skip from this point like that. But then I don't want you to skip it like that. So now I'm going to get this keyframe. You know what? Let me first make all these keyframes easy ease. And now I'm gonna make this keyframe to be toggle hold keyframe. So this is like going to hold the movement or like by the time it moves from this point to another, it's not going to be a gradual movement. It is going to just keep from this point to this point. And now let's first fix the these keyframes. Now I'm going to go here on the graph editor and then try to fix that. Yeah, that's perfect. That's perfect. That's perfect. Now we're going to come back here in our project and open up the files. So we have our documents, so I have the back part and then the front part. Then I'm going to drag them and put them into our composition. I'm going to open up a new null object and then I'm going to parent all these to the null object. Okay, so that when I try to scale them down, it will be evenly scaled. That's cool. So now, but I want this to be at the back. I'm going to rotate this one slight, but then I want it to be slightly toward this direction and also this one. So let's do it like that. Cool somehow like that but i think this is a lot reduce the size a lot so let's say 30 that is better for me these ones come from the bottom then they come up i need to name my keyframes because you know i'm gonna come here on the document i'm gonna put a keyframe here so position have a keyframe there let's call this 211 i'm gonna put another keyframe there but now the first keyframe, it has to put it somewhere below. So I'm going to move it very far down. I think I can move this, you know, the end point to, let's say, yeah, I'm going to do this keyframe assistant and do it like that. So I want the keyframes to be easy ease. Do something like that cool we will be okay when we apply a drop shadow on one of these layers and then uh, i can increase the softness a bunch let's uh, increase the opacity slightly as well so now i'm gonna create a shape tool so i'm gonna come here on my ellipse make sure that none of the points or none of the layers here are selected alt click i'm holding alt down here until we reach the rectangle so now I'm going to create a rectangle like this. Okay, this rectangle has to be white. So now let's go back to our selection tool. So I want it somewhere like this. So now I'm going to type these words. But now I want this word to be red. So now I'm going to drag it here and put it exactly where this word is or where this shape is. But now I can also copy the drop shadow we used there and then paste it on the background or on this layer in the background or the shape layer but now it's uh it's so feathered i'm gonna reduce the softness a bit and the second part is it's putting another word down here there's another word which we're gonna have to use down there so ctrl d that is copying and then i'm gonna drag it and type the word savings booklet this is going to be slightly like bigger than the word above. But the deeper we go into this video, the less I explain things because I know that I've explained them earlier. So you have to be very attentive. But then I need to also add a drop shadow. 
so now let me get this drop shadow this drop shadow and then uh, i'm gonna paste it on this when you overuse shortcuts you sometimes forget how to use the other things without a shortcut but now um this word has some bit of animation on it okay let's pre-compose this word you understand why i'm doing it i'll explain later booklet and then i'm gonna go into another composition this is double click so now that this way is in this new composition i'm gonna come here down because it's a text layer and then i'm gonna come here on animate and then i'm gonna look for enable per character 3d i'm going to create another thing let's say i'm gonna add position and on position i'm going to put a keyframe there and then i'm gonna come on time four six and then i'm gonna put another keyframe there okay but for four for the first keyframe we're going to say this is going to be at 500 the z place or the z position is going to be at 500 then as it moves like this it comes on zero but still that's not all we're going to do we're going to have to come here down in range and then we're going to offset it slightly and then um, i'm going to come to add advanced and then i switch random order on so that it's not like in order that's the first part now the second part we're going to still press u to bring the keyframes we've created press control space to bring this fx console and then you're gonna type typewriter so when you type typewriter it is gonna type out things okay this is the second animation and then i'm gonna bring this one and i put it exactly where this one ends so for the start we're gonna bring the randomness order on words are coming in and they're coming off you know like that something like that now since this is a 3d object i'm gonna bring a camera let's say i'm gonna go to layer new bring a new camera and a new camera what i'm gonna use is a two node camera there's a, there's nothing so big about the camera the depth of field should be enabled because this is basically what you want it for now we're gonna say this is gonna be depth of field i'm gonna open the second view something like this and then tap on this layer to know i come here in the camera and then i just open camera options the depth of field is already on when I bring this one slightly behind the characters which are in the background, I want them to be out of focus. So let me change this. I prefer using hexagon because I think it's the nice stuff. So let me increase this a bit. And now it is showing you that the words, the words down there, they're out of focus as, and as they move forward, they get into focus. Now we go back into our main composition, which is the Volkswagen. You see now it's like that the reason why i decided to just put it in another composition is because i didn't want it to affect the rest of the layers i'm going to bring this gentleman here and i also make him a 3d object from this side but the camera stays there it doesn't affect anything here i'm going to make also this one a 3d object and also this one a 3d object let me just make this and call it the kdf you know what let me call it rec so that i can remember it very well so now I'm also making this a 3D object. I make all the document 3D objects. I'm gonna drag these and bring them down here. Let me create a temporarily um, now object to first resize these two. So now I'm gonna make this a 3D object because these are 3D objects already. So these two, I'm going to parent them like that. And then I'm gonna resize them. I'm gonna reduce the size a bit. I don't want them to be so big. Let me extend them there. So now it's better to now parent them to the rest of the project like that. So now everything is a document. So you will see that when this one goes down, it goes with all the words. Does it make sense now? Yeah, it now makes the most sense. You'll understand that, right? Okay, now let me open up a new now object. And I can call it a scalar, something like that. Uh, a position let me just create this to make it a 3d object and then put something in there that's the first keyframe and then the second keyframe is going to be at the exact beginning which is at frame one the nazi flag i want it to be on the scalar and also since the document is controlling everything it can also be parented instead of parenting everyone i'm only parented the thing which is controlling the rest so now i'm going to reduce the size pushing it behind in the background somehow like that now i'm going to select everything like this easy ease i'm gonna make this thing go a bit smoother as it's moving out and basically that's where we're gonna cut it from i'm gonna come here on scalar because scalar stops here it stops on uh, 417 then i'm gonna just bring it a frame forward like 418 so I'm gonna highlight everything, the background and mid texture, they're gonna stay there. Press Alt and then, you know, the close brackets, you know, these box brackets to cut them from there. So that's it. 
So now I can highlight everything and just say pre-compose and I call this scene one. Cool. So now that's it for scene number one. We will go back to it later because we need to also apply motion blur. So that's the first part. So now we're gonna hide it and then we're gonna start the second scene. 